Happy Women's History Month. It is Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. I'm Ashley Pollard here for today's edition of Tuesday Talk, where we review common real estate and mortgage-related topics. Today's topic is seven things to consider when purchasing a two to four family property. The first thing I want you to think about is location. Not all neighborhoods are going to be zoned for multifamily properties. Some are only zoned for single families. Some areas are zoned for commercial properties. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you understand the neighborhood you're trying to buy into so that you know if quality tenants are also looking at that neighborhood to rent. Next, you're going to want to check for ease of access to public transportation. What type of town events does that community offer? What are the school systems like? What are, what are the attractions that are nearby? What highways um, are nearby? These are things that your tenants are going to consider if they have families, uh, if they work in the city and maybe need to get on the bus or the train to go to work, or even if they're just single people or couples, um, they're, they're gonna think about these things in their next home. So you should also be thinking about this before you make your purchase final. Number two is to know your financing options. If you're gonna house hack, which means you're gonna live in one of your units and rent out the others, then that means that you will have some benefits. You're gonna have access to lower interest rates and lower down payment options. And the huge plus is that you might have most or all of your mortgage payment paid for by the rent payments from your tenants. If you're just seeking to use your multifamily as an investment and not live in it, you will have higher down payment requirements. They might be 15 to 25% down payment, which is going to be heftier than the three to 5% down payment that you might have as an owner occupant. So talk to your mortgage lender about these options. And if you don't yet have one, just let me know so that I can connect you with my, my lenders. Number three is to overestimate your expenses because you will have them. You're going to need cash reserves for many reasons. One is your tenant is not going to treat your apartment the way they would treat a house that they own. That's just point blank period, unless you're a tenant like me who takes great care of their space. Um, there might be considerable expenses that you aren't expecting and you don't want your tenant to be in a situation where they aren't getting the services that they need because you don't have the cash reserves available to correct whatever issues arise. You might have to deal with vacancy problems. Maybe your tenant moves out early unexpectedly. Maybe you're having a hard time following, uh, uh, finding a quality tenant to put into your apartment. You might have tenants who miss rent payments. You might have to file for eviction. And that means that you're going to have uh, court fees. You're going to have legal fees. There's all sorts of costs that come along with being a landlord. So even though you are expecting those rent payments to come in, there might be times when they're not and you're going to have to have a backup plan in case that does occur. Number four is to crawl before you walk, aka start small. So start small with your property. A lot of people are calling me for three to four families right now, and that's totally fine. But if you've never owned a home, you've never been a landlord, you've never really led people in a way where you have to be the authoritative figure, you're going to probably struggle with having three or four tenants at once. So maybe start with the two family. And then once you feel comfortable, you have your feet wet, then you can move on to a larger property, maybe even a commercial building that you add to your portfolio. Also start small with your repairs. If your property is in good shape, just do things like adding doorknobs that are nice and shiny. Add uh, nice new light fixtures. Bring in some bright and airy paint that's going to make the space feel larger and more welcoming. These are things that when the tenant walks in, they will appreciate. And then hopefully when they move in, they will appreciate the work that you've done and do a better job at maintaining your property. Number five is to hire me. Why is that? Because I am going to give you guidance before, during, and after your home purchase. We're going to do the tenant screening together. I will make sure you understand what you're looking at. I'm going to field all text calls and emails at all times of day. I'm going to host and set up all the showings. There's a lot that goes into it that you're probably not thinking about and probably don't want to do, like advertising. All of that costs money and that is something that I will handle for you. So hire someone like me, hire me, and we will make sure everything goes smoothly and we get you quality tenants in your apartment. 
Number six is to think about the income taxes because your income taxes, your tax return is gonna look a lot different when you own an investment property. So you definitely wanna hire a CPA or experienced accountant who's gonna be able to lead you through what it means now that you do have an investment property. You're also gonna have certain items that you have to report that might even be tax deductible. So you don't wanna miss out on opportunities to get money back from the IRS because that will help you in the long run as well to keep more money in your pocket. Last but not least is professionalism. Your tenants are going to have a certain level of respect for you if they see that you are able to handle your property. If you are responding to their repair requests timely, if you're available during business hours, if you're available during uh, emergency situations after hours, if you're collecting rent payments on time and just making sure that they know who you are and they understand that you are in charge of the property and you have everything under control, they're going to respect you as a landlord and and you're not going to face the situations where tenants might say, well, you know, why should I pay you on time? You don't even know how to help me fix this. Or you don't even come, there's mold in my shower and you haven't even come to repair that. I hear these things all the time from tenants where they have slumlords. So don't be a slumlord. Know how to take care of your property. And if you don't, if that's daunting to you, that's what I'm here for to help guide you again, before, during, and after. And if I don't have the answers, I always have someone who does. So thanks for tuning in for today's term. I appreciate you for tuning in every week and I hope all the women of the world are doing something special today and all month and every day of the year. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next Tuesday.